So welcome to Techno Dad Life, and my name is Jeff. And so today we're going to be looking at this switch. It's a 10 gigabit switch, has uh, eight ports, which was important for me. So if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll be sure to add anything I mention in the video in the description if I remember. So today what we're going to be looking at is the XStore Unmanaged Switch SKS1200-8XGT. And it's a 10 gigabit switch, or should I, I should say actually it has 8 10 gigabit ports, which are also do uh, 1 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit and I think 5 gigabit. Uh, it's plug and play, unmanaged, you don't have to do anything, and it supposedly has a silent fan. So we'll see. So, so if we open up the box, we have our user manual, a inspection sticker, we have a power cord, we have ears for rack mounting, And then uh, finally, our switch. If we look at the front of the switch, we have the some symbol here. There's the name of the switch. And then we have our eight ports. And then on the lights, so the green side is 2.5 and above, and the yellow orange side is one gigabit or, or 100 megabytes, but hopefully you don't do 100 megabytes. Uh, there's a power light on the sides. We have some vent holes. Other side, there's our fan. On the back, we just have our power cord going in. Top is nothing. And then on the bottom is a little sticker. And there's the make and the model number and everything else. So if you're going to be switching to 10 gigabit, there's a couple different things you need. Okay, so you'll need a few things to start out with. So you'll need a 10 gigabit card. And so this is one that is from a server. It has SFP plus ports. So for those, you'll need to get a SFP plus that has a, that has a RJ45 port rather than the fiber ports. So the fiber ports are the ones with the two. We want one with just a regular RJ45. You can also buy those new. So here I have one from LR Link. Also has a SFP Plus port on it. <clears throat> but I was just looking. So I was just looking and actually uh, 10 gigabits cards, adapters with RJ45 ports actually have come down quite a bit. So here we can see one for 80, one for 63, and then on the bottom, we have one for a laptop. Now, if you're wanting to do it for your laptop and you have a Mac, make sure it says that it is Mac compatible because not all of the Thunderbolt or USB-C adapters for um, 10 gig for 10 gigabit are Mac uh, compatible. So just be aware of that. And then the last thing you'll need is some CAT6 cable at least. So CAT6 is the minimum for 10 gigabit, so make sure it's that. So let's put the whole thing together and then see how it works. Okay, so I'm back. So everything is put together. And the first thing that I noticed is the fan is not so quiet, it has sort of a low thumbing. So I don't know if you could hear that. So I don't know if you could hear that, but it's definitely noticeable. Uh, so it's not jet blast loud like uh, many servers are, but it is definitely noticeable. So that thing. So I've been playing around testing the 10 gigabit switch and so some really interesting things, and I don't think they're with the switch, but they're with my Ugreen NAS. So, so basically, I've gotten very inconsistent results, and partly one is the Ugreen was updating. So here, let's 
just delete some of these and we're just going to pass those all three of those over and here we can see our speed tests about three four hundred in there slowly going up so my range of speeds have gone from like 10 to 750 and here you can see it's around 400 now but I've gotten things as you know other things higher than that so let's do it the opposite way let's copy over to our computer from our NAS and we'll replace those and here you can see it's going higher it's in the 500s here so I can't really tell you what's going on but I definitely think it's a problem with the NAS rather than with the switch but because of that problem, I can't really fully test the switch out. But if you're looking for speeds around 500 megabytes, uh, this is a good option. So how much does it cost? Well, on Amazon right now, it's 283 uh, plus a 10% discount. So for 10 gigabit switches right now, we have basically two tiers, the ones in the $100 range, and then there's the ones in the $200 range. Just judging by the reviews of the $100 switches, I would say stay away from those. The $200 switches tend to get better reviews, so I would head into that category. So now is the Zeki Store uh, switch worth it? And so if you just want to do Ethernet ports, uh, then definitely this is a contender. But I would say if you have some adapters or you buy some off of uh, eBay, I would go with a different switch. You can buy a 10 or 8 port 10 gigabit SFP plus switch for $100 less. So if you can get the SFP plus adapters, then this would definitely be a better option, I think, for most people. So whatever you choose, I think you'll be happy given this price point. Uh, there are better options, of course, if you go up price points. The only thing that you have to be aware of is it does make sound, so if it's going to be in a room with you, you'll definitely notice the fan noise. Uh, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.